for do not cause widespread volatility but what might cause widespread volatility is this across here you got cpi out of the us at 130 today and you've also then got the fed at um at seven o'clock and then the press conference at 7 30 but this might be somewhat troublesome to go and to go and try and trade right a couple of reasons you've got this cpi print at um got the cpi print at 130 right you also got the core inflation rate and you've got the total rate of inflation i don't know why they say inflation rates in this calendar but they do they are cpi prints right now the core cpi print excludes food and fuel costs because they are quite volatile components of the cpi print and the total rate of inflation includes food and fuel costs right obviously food and fuel costs you know things to heat your home and the cost of food and the cost of putting petrol in your car right? all these things are large components of people's day-to-day -day expenses so these are widely looked at figures but these are a more stable rate of inflation throughout the wider economy like so not heavily inflect, uh, influenced but like you know outside of the country things where um you know maybe food prices rise in another country or you know oil prices rise globally you know that can affect these without giving a good indication of what's going on across the wider uh, wider economy so that's why you get the uh, that's why you get the two prints right and the headline figure is the year over year figure so headline inflation print year over year which is where or how much inflation has grown between now and this time last year which again is another thing people fail to really understand when it comes to inflation which is again another reason why i think people shouldn't vote but this inflation rate is expected to be 3.4 percent now if you come into inflation right you can see maybe it's a bit of a better just visual image on core inflation you can see this has been trending lower over the last year may 2023 5.3 then 4.8 4.7 4.3 4.1 so this has been trending lower now the majority of the population will think that this is prices coming down this is not prices going down the cost of goods and services is still going up in this situation right it's just going up at a slower pace than it was previously right so when you come back to inflation and you have a look at here like people think this is what this is their cost of living going down right which it's not right this is absolutely not people's cost of living going down right which is why people are giving out that you know, inflation is going down but the prices think things are still going up because people just don't have a um people just don't have a clue right you can see inflation obviously rose throughout 2021 and then into 2022 and then peaked in june of 2022 at 9.1 percent right but if you have a look at where we are in april 2024 right that is 3.4 percent higher than it was in april 2023 which is 4.9 percent higher than it was in april 2022 which was 8.3 percent higher than it was in april 2021 which was 4.2 percent higher than it was in april 2020 so that is like cumulatively that's like i don't know it's what 3.4 3.4 plus 5 is what, 8.5? It's what, 17%. It's kind of like over 20% inflation over the last four years. That is then cumulative, so it's kind of more like 25%. So the prices of goods and services have gone up 25% in, 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 in four years. Again, that's not prices of things coming down. So to actually fix this, you need inflation to go negative, but that hasn't happened. In a uh, long time, didn't even manage to happen when uh, when COVID happened. Now you had negative inflation back in 2015, as you can see back here. I mean, it does happen. You come back um, back in through here. You know, in the 1930s, you had a massive spout, massive negative inflation. Right back in 1939, you had negative inflation. Back in 1949, negative inflation. 1955, but then you didn't see a single bit of negative inflation all the way through to 2009. Then you had a small bit in uh, 2015 and then haven't seen it haven't seen it since so um what you actually need to get your prices down is is this for inflation to go negative but they don't want that to happen just because of how the world works obviously people need to buy things and yeah i mean the price of things continue to go up but that price of the percentage of increase goes up higher than or a lot higher than people's wages which is why your money gets eaten into which is why you need to invest your money and generate a return on your cash rather than leaving it sat in a um leaving it sat in a bank account but anyway that's maybe a conversation <clears throat> conversation for another day but 
you know, back to the inflation print. Now, I don't like sitting there doing analysis into these inflation prints and saying it could go either way because it's a bit cheap analysis. But ultimately, this can actually go either way, right? Because you've had some weak economic data prints over the last month or two, right? If I just get this up, has picked up slightly recently. But let me just get. Um, Um. All right, so if I have a look at this, inflation was rising over the first part of the year, right, in through here. This is the economic data, a chart that shows the surprise of economic data. So in here, economic data is surprising to the upside. In here, economic data is surprising to the downside. So with economic data surprising to the downside over the last kind of couple of months, right, it kind of does suggest economic data weak. If economic data continues to be weak, well, then inflation is expected to be lower. The interesting thing, though, is inflation is not really expected to be lower. It is slightly in terms of the core year-over-year -year figure, but it's expected at 3.5%. Then year over year is expected at 3.4%. Right, monthly inflation though is expected to be relatively low, at 0.1%. Right, core CPI month over month expected at 0.3%. That 0.3% is still a little too, a little too high. 0.2% would be perfect. But that's kind of more where they want it. 0.1% at this point in there, at this point in time. Right, but economic data kind of surprising to the downside has picked up a little bit recently, which maybe is a justification for inflation not coming down at the um, not coming down at the at the pace that they at the pace that they thought. But they've had some you know prints over the last couple of weeks where you had manufacturing PMIs, services PMIs, where the prices indicators in those data prints were, were still above 50 and still relatively high. So there is a risk to upside um, upside inflation. But then you've got to tie that in with the Fed later on, right? So you can't just think about this in isolation because you've got to tie this in with the Fed later on and then think about the expected reaction. So you've got here FOMC economic projections, right? What the economic projections are, I can go onto this and go to, if you just type in, in Google CME Fed Watch tool, right? Give us a minute to a uh, minute to load. Right. The 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 main aspect of those economic proje projections is this: the dot plot. Right now, what a dot plot is is expectation expectations for interest rates um, through the year end, through the next year end, uh, through the 2026 end, and then longer run, um, and then longer run, longer run, uh, longer run interest rates. Right now. If you have a look back here, you've got the interest rate of 5.5%. That's not going to change, right? So the market needs to look at what the Fed expects going forward, right? Now, I'll tie this into CPI in a minute, right? But then if you have a look through here, right, this is the line of 4.5, and then it's expected at 4.75, right? So the market told us three months ago to expect three interest rate cuts through to year end, right? That is more than likely to change. Right, we are not expecting three interest rate cuts through to year end. Right, we're probably expecting more like one, and I would imagine this changes to one. Right, that would be the consensus, or that would be the expectation. Right, if the dot plots come in and reflect two interest rate cuts through to year end, you will see the dollar sell off, and you'll see stocks rally off the back of that. <clears throat> right, if it comes back to one. I'm not sure really what you see with the dollar. I still imagine equities probably try and push higher off the back of that due to its, you know, that's kind of expected by markets and kind of priced in and and, and it kind of gives the green light ahead to, to go forward. But then if it comes in in line with, with expectations and come in at one, right, you need to look at... <clears throat> You need to look at then that inflation print. Obviously, if these get reflected or these get adjusted uh, adjusted through the year end, you then got 20, 2025 and 2026, and the longer run expectations will probably have to be revised as well. But again, I will come back to that come back to that in a minute. All right now, you've got this core CPI. Or not, I don't want to say core CPI. We've got these inflation prints at 1:30 today. Right, but the Fed are not going to. The Fed don't sit there at, at two o'clock today and then make their decision as to what they're going to do at seven o'clock. The decision as to what the Fed are going to do and what they are going to say has already been prepared. Right, they might adjust the statement slightly to reflect these inflation prints, but ultimately, 
the vote on economic projections has already been done without taking into consideration what these inflation prints are right so if these inflation prints come in in line with consensus we can trust these economic projections more right if inflation beats or misses consensus we don't have as much trust in these economic projections because they were made before that beat or miss right so if this comes in and beats consensus right maybe the economic projections will need to be updated slightly right and then you're kind of relying on the press conference to give forward guidance right if this misses consensus then the economic projections again may need to be um then may need to be updated slightly but if they are slightly lower than anticipated right the fed won't go more dovish if they are lower than anticipated right the only chance or uh, the only the, uh, the best opportunity from this is if this comes in higher than expected right and then these need to change their opinion and change what they're saying to reflect a higher than anticipated inflation print so a higher than anticipated inflation print would mean long dollars and short stocks whether that short stocks holds is another another question might be a little short-term trade on that but certainly a, a a long on stocks on a miss on inflation is a is a better better trade on stocks um but again that's where it gets slightly gets slightly tricky so if these come in lower than anticipated maybe that's not the best trade right if these come in higher than anticipated then these have to update what they say right and then that probably gets us a bigger move off the back of this right but the annoying thing about fed being at seven o'clock today kind of means that i don't think markets will attack this with as much aggression as they would if the inflation print wasn't at seven o'clock Right. And then you've got to think about the implications then going forward for market pricing, which again is another thing that you can have a look at when it comes to um when it comes to the dot plot is if I just come back here and I come to current, what this does is it, it kind of shows you the pricing of different bond markets and stuff, but shows you the probabilities of inf of interest rates being at different prices at different meetings, or essentially what the market is pricing in come each of these meetings now there's a 99.4 percent chance of interest rates remaining the same at today's meeting so no chance of an interest rate adjustment at today's meeting come through to july and there's a 91 percent chance that we do not get an interest rate cut in july so it's pretty much guaranteed we get no uh, no cut in july it is as close to guaranteed as you're ever going to get that we're not going to get a cut in June brings us on to this uh, on to September and the picture is slightly changing for September right or the picture has kind of slightly changed for September you can see a week ago there was a 30 percent chance of an inter of of no interest rate cut and a 57 percent chance of a cut right but now it's 50 50 right so the market is unsure as to whether we will get a cut or not in September I reckon today may give us that answer right you got the inflation print if inflation is hot today and then the central bank need to come out and say you know there's no talk of interest rate cuts yet even though they did say they started this discussion on interest rate cuts like in december of last year it's clearly not panned out the way that they that they had predicted right which a lot of things have in the last number of years but i'm not going to get on to that right so it's 50 50 for september i reckon september's meeting will be near enough decided on today's uh today's data with the inflation and then the fed taken into consideration you will still have uh, you know print in july and then august as well before you get the september prints and also actually a print in september before you get it so there's still a bit to go through before september then it brings us into november right and you can see there's a higher probability of a cut than not only a 33 percent chance of no cut through to november 48 percent chance of a cut in november and then we come down to december and there's a 50 50 chance of two cuts right or and then only a let well it's not 50 50 but um pretty even as to whether we're going to get two cuts equal amounts for three cuts and then and then none so uh, i certainly think you can rule this one out kind of between these two i think i think it's more of that there's obviously a chance that they don't as well but i think it's more more of that so coming into today then inflation prints where we get the better trade i think is a higher than anticipated inflation print right if it's a higher than anticipated inflation print you know fed's economic projections of one interest rate cut is certainly likely to um certainly is likely to continue 
the US dollar higher and maybe spark another bout of US dollar strength. And that again for US dollar strength would give us a better trade because you've got the ECB have started to cut interest rates. The Bank of Canada have started to cut interest rates. The Swiss National Bank have started to cut interest rates. You've got the Bank of England who will probably want to cut interest rates soon enough. You've got Aussie and Kiwi which are a little bit different. But you've got those four central banks cutting interest rates and then you've got the Fed who are continuously having to prolong when they cut interest rates. That is a situation where you get some probably broad-based US dollar strength or relatively broad-based US dollar strength and that is um, something that we can we can take advantage of. So what I'm hoping for today is a higher than anticipated inflation print, right? Be long dollars and then whether, you know, you should probably they should probably confirm one cut through to year end. If they do go and cut two, but or say they're going to cut twice and then you get a higher than anticipated inflation print, that is then probably going to cause them to change their mind slightly or the markets will maybe presume they're going to change their mind slightly. You know, they did tell us three to begin with and then that's, the markets did go and price in six or seven. So the markets do get a bit ahead of themselves, but um there is a chance that they come in and say two interest rate cuts. I think the prudent thing to do would be, I mean, the prudent thing to do would be to say we're going to get one, right? And then try and get ahead of the game a bit, make sure they get inflation under control. And then if they have to cut slightly more than they initial, initially communicated to markets, well, then that's fine, right? What they don't want to do is come in and say we're going to cut interest rates three times or two times, right? And then, you know, spark a rally in asset prices and potentially cause an increase in inflation. But the Fed have done numerous stupid things over the last number of years. What's one more to them? Right.